theme of digital technology uh, into learning process. Olya, can you hear us? Thank you. Hello, Eli. Can you hear me? Yes, great. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. This is very strange to, to see the whole room like that. And uh, I'd start by uh, thanking to uh, our Israeli colleagues, CP, Alona, and Eli for providing us the access, hybrid access to those that uh, we could not join you, unfortunately. We have been, uh, let's say, I've seen the party that you had uh, last night. Uh, we were virtually with you. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, that's a pity that uh, we could not be there at the moment. So uh, thank you for uh, the organizers, to the organizers and to, to all the team that, uh, that has supported this uh, hybrid version. Um, the presentation which I'm going to have today um, is actually more of uh, shared practices that uh, we have applied into the Technical University of uh, Cluj-Napoca. I'm going to share my screen. Um, could you please confirm? I'm seeing actually that, yeah, the, the screen is shared. I'm going to start the slides. I hope you can see because I'm not seeing the screen anymore. So um, considering that assessment was one of the key topics uh, of, um, of this workshop, um, we are thinking to provide some um, uh, insights on the assessment practices that we have carried on for educational uh, processes, teaching, learning, um, and uh, those that relate actually to adoption of digital technologies into such uh, processes. And I'm going to present uh, two case studies um, which have been carried along three years uh, and the way we have approached assessment of uh, uh, digital technologies adoption in two particular scenarios. Um, one was oriented on uh, e-learning environments and the teaching learning processes that occur in learning uh, environments. Um, and the evaluation, the assessment we had was at um, uh, system information level. Um, as we are engineers and we are coming with and we are having the engineering background, let's say we are more oriented, um, which is may, some, sometimes can be unfortunately sometimes can be unfortunate, but we are oriented on developing functionalities, developing uh, features, uh, but um, let's say we are missing the pedagogical um, approach to that. Uh, still, we are trying to make progress and therefore the first scenario that we have proposed to have it evaluated was um, the platform that you are using for uh, teaching learning activities and mostly what has become the uh, institutional infrastructure during the COVID uh, pandemic. For the second case study, uh, for the second case study, I'm hearing some echo. Uh, could you please confirm that everything is okay? Yes. Okay. Um, for the second case study, um, we have um, um, moved towards interactive learning and uh, I'm going to show uh, one instrument uh, that we are, have applied to evaluate the um, perception of students when trying to adopt such a, a learning environment into practice. So. For the first case study, we have um, uh, adopted an evaluation based on system usability scale uh, and a technology acceptance model. Um, these, um, let's say, instruments or more or less models that uh, are applied um, consider the adoption at uh, student level, but also at teacher level. Mostly in the study that we have conducted, we have focused on uh, students. Um, and again, it's a, it's a technical perspective that uh, focuses on um, information system uh, approach. Um, in the beginning, I was telling that uh, we have um, had this um, assessment during three years 
um, of activities and uh, the uh, evaluation of the, with the applicability of system usability scale and the technology acceptance model has been applied to three uh, cohorts of uh, students. Uh, the first, um, the first uh, pilot of uh, this evaluation uh, considers 63 students from the faculty that um, me and my colleagues are part of, so electronics, telecommunication and information uh, technology. Uh, it was a pilot student, uh, it was a pilot study that has been conducted in 2018 and uh, assessed uh, the applicability of the system usability scale as it is. We're going to see the um, uh, description of the instrument uh, in the further slides. Uh, considering that uh, the system usability scales is somehow limited, so uh, the factors which uh, it's uh, that are being evaluated are learnability, memorability, um, errors that the systems uh, that the students are encountering in the systems, and so on. We have tried to adapt uh, the system usability scale towards the technology acceptance model that uh, is focusing um, that is moving the focus more to the a student to a student-centered approach. Um, that study has been conducted in two cohorts, one with 460 students that have participated uh, in the study from both the bachelor and master program. It has been conducted in uh, 2020. And I think that during one uh, of our love distance session, we have uh, presented some results. Um, in order to um, evaluate, let's say, um, to have a more extensive study, we have applied the same model, but this time moving towards another profile under the same umbrella of electrical and electronic engineering, but this time specifically to electrical um, engineering. Uh, so that um, the purpose of this study was to uh, investigate the um, approach to the platform during the COVID uh, pandemic using the same uh, instrument. Uh, the study was conducted in uh, 2021 uh, um, and um, we are going to see the results a bit uh, further. So I'm going to describe the instruments because uh, this is the topic of the presentation to um, see the way we have adopted, the way we have applied these proposed instruments. And for the phase first, the pilot uh, that I was mentioning before, we have applied the system usability scale, which is a questionnaire that uh, focuses um, on evaluating the system from its perspective of functionalities and the functions. Um, the evaluation uh, scale is proposed to be a Likert, a five-leveled uh, Likert, and these are the um, elements that uh, are investigated under a SUS, under a system usability uh, scale. I would like to use the learning management uh, system features frequently, so if we check um, all these components, we can see that it's an evaluation uh, at system level from a functionality um, point of view, and it's not bringing any ergonomic or student center or person center um, approach. It's more oriented on usability uh, features and uh, UI experience. So this is the um, uh, system usability scale that um, is being proposed and an extension on that takes into account five factors. Um, the um, uh, evaluation statements, let's say, can be um, assessed under learnability uh, for example, I think that various functions are well integrated. Here is uh, the applicability on the TUCNE learning uh, platform, where the TUCNE learning platform is developed over uh, Office 365 um, services. So it's a customization of uh, SharePoint plus integration with the Power Apps and so on. Um, therefore, the features which are, uh, so the perspective to evaluate learnability are functions, um, are the way that the user is being trained, uh, and uh, also um, if the content is being um, accessible in terms of how fast we can reach that content into the, the platform. 
In terms of um, efficiency, we refer to specific activities, so necessary activities and how these uh, facility, uh, these functionalities are supporting the activities. Um, if there is um, enough information to support that we can find in the system to support the uh, educational features, if the features are uh, very slow, so this is a performance at system level. Um, one component which reflects the communication uh, approach um, and also um, we can see the way it, uh, that the system can be used for production purposes, so calendars, task lists and, um, and so on. Uh, there are some platforms which do not accommodate um, as out-of-the-box features uh, such functionalities and therefore the system, the SUS needs to be applied. Um, on the environment that we are using at institutional level, um, all these components could have been um, evaluated. Um, moving on to the next um, categories of features, we have memorability and uh, errors. For example, in terms of memorability, um, how the um, features are being reminded by the students easily. So for example, where they need, when they need to check uh, report document repositories if they can find them easily. Um, another um, component is if they can't find them cumbersome to be accessed or complex. Uh, some aspects related to user interface, some aspects related to um, management of the overall uh, features that the platform uh, is, uh, is offering. Uh, in terms of errors, um, the points that are being proposed by SUS and they have been applied uh, in our case as well is the support level. So if uh, actions can be carried on without um, support, for example, tutorials or even direct support with a technician, um, if uh, the system's availability, so if there are, um, let's say, um, issues with accessing the platform, or inconsistency in terms of uh, educational uh, functionalities. For example, uh, having repositories uh, duplicated, having um, uh, mistyped links to resources and, uh, and so on. Um, and the last component which is included into SUS is our action specific. If we think of uh, content to be accessed, um, applicability of features to download, so basic, um, basic features, basic content management for systems that can be found uh, and, can, and can be accessed through the platform. Um, it refers to content, a document uploading, downloading, um, notes that can be posted, uh, and also communication. I mean, this is a model that is uh, proposed. We have adapted some of the components to our, um, to our own environment. Um, and this was the instrument that we have proposed in the first stage. The problem that uh, we have encountered is that um, the perspective is more or less impersonal on the student, so it's evaluating the uh, system from a functionality point of view, and therefore for the next phase we have tried to move to the um, process of adoption uh, that uh, includes readiness assessment of the technology and also um, the impact that the technology is having on the, on the user. So the technology acceptance model, um, as um, probably some of you are already aware, uh, involves uh, several factors that can be assessed. For example, efficiency and effectiveness of the technology is defined by perceived uh, usefulness, where learnability and, and memorability that we have previously used in the SUS have been integrated in perceived ease of use. So these are the input vectors that define uh, the attitude towards user, uh, usage of the users, the behavioral intention, and this actually defines the actual usage of the system. The technology acceptance model, this is the version that, uh, this is the model that has been uh, proposed early in 1970s, but has uh, variations to be adopted. Um, at the moment, the variation that we have proposed was to adopt these factors into the input vectors of the, um, of the TAM. So this was the next instrument that we have used. Um, all um, 
and let's say all these components that we have previously uh, seen have been uh, adopted into the uh, input vectors. So perceived use to evaluate the perceived usefulness. We have defined uh, 18 questions um, that relate to uh, both uh, user experience, but here, if you can see, we are relating more to a personal approach to a user experience. So we are not evaluating it. Um, we are more towards a qualitative evaluation. Um, we can check, um, for example, um, if some features were used to easier access the course content itself, if the features improve the learning performance, um, anyhow, the evaluation is an overview evaluation because, for example, improvement needs to be defined, how we assess the improvement needs to be defined, but this is the, um, uh, let's say, an overall evaluation and an overall perspective of the students. Uh, in terms of uh, perceived uh, ease um, of use, uh, besides uh, the way that the content and the features are um, being um, accessible or not. Um, actually, this dimension is translated into multiple uh, statements. Uh, for example, we could refer to the process itself, the learning process itself. We could refer to uh, functionalities. We could refer to an interaction with the interface. We can refer to the operational aspects. Um, so um, there is a difference between uh, how to operate the system. So um, in terms of uh, uh, how we learn to, to access the system and also how the process of learning uh, is, being, uh, is being approached through those uh, features. So there is a, a variation in meaning of these uh, statements. Uh, in terms of attitude towards uh, usage, um, the questionnaire defines uh, 10 statements that we can uh, refer to, and uh, it's uh, also oriented uh, more on the personal dimension. Uh, for example, we have this uh, qualitative approach if from an overview perspective, uh, again, studying through office is a good idea. If I'm positive towards using um, um, the system, I mean, we have here the eCampus system, but of course, this may be replaced with uh, Moodle, Blackboard, uh, depending on the system that we are using. Um, okay, and the last component of the model, uh, behavioral intention, that uh, actually is the last step before uh, characterizing the attitude towards uh, usage, um, it's more or less oriented on a future perspective. For example, if we intend to use these features uh, in the future to intend to use the system itself for a low learning process, so there can be uh, factors which are overlapping and those can be um, evaluated. Um, in terms of uh, these last two uh, cohorts of um, studies that uh, these last two studies that we have approached, so uh, the extended uh, system usability scale applied to uh, TAM, as uh, I was mentioning in the beginning, we have firstly applied on a cohort of 40, 460 students. And also during the pandemic, during uh, 2021, we applied to a profile of uh, electrical engineering, 47 students. Um, and although the, um, let's say the um, sample of students is not the same uh, and needs to be uh, evaluated uh, um, considering this factor, we can see um, general improvement, this could be because of the pandemic, we can see the, but still we can see a general improvement or the perceived uh, usefulness that the student has encountered after um, one year when they have been um, using the platform just as an asset, complementary to physical um, meetings, uh, so but the perceived usefulness has been highly uh, higher rated than uh, during the first uh, study, the perceived ease of use um, was also um, had a more, let's say, um, an approach more towards a very positive evaluation, uh, attitude towards uh, intention the same as behavioral intention the same. Uh, the factors under which uh, this improvement happened needs to be, um, of course, um, 
assessed. For example, uh, we were supporting at eCampus level the uh, process of getting adjusted to the platform through uh, tutorials, through uh, online support, uh, meaning uh, communication chats. And uh, in the last phase, we have also uh, propose the chatbot uh, an assistant that could assess them in um, getting used to the to the features so that was the first uh, the first case study uh, the second case study i will try to go uh, faster through that uh, because i'm aware that uh, the time is getting um, is uh, already stretched so um, in terms of the interactive environment, uh, when we move to such, the approach needs to be uh, different and we tried to um, assess more the, the way the student uh, is uh, perceiving the technology and more a student-centered uh, approach. And therefore, um, the instrument that we have um, proposed to have such an environment evaluated is a user experience questionnaire. And before jumping to the instrument itself, um, I should give some words uh, on, the on the interactive environment that we have proposed. The context is uh, first year students, um, a cohort of 220 uh, students that are uh, having a discipline named uh, Applied Informatics, where they uh, learn about uh, fundamental um, aspects in uh, computer architecture, in uh, systems, in networks, and uh, so on. For example, for notions uh, or elements in computer architecture, we proposed a um, um, serious game that could support their understanding on computer hardware parts, uh, interconnection between them, uh, and um, also identification of them. Uh, the game that has been proposed is a prototype level, so we wanted to investigate the flow and how, they, uh, how students perceive that as a, as a support. So uh, I'm going to stop the uh, for uh, one second, uh, and I'm going to go a bit through the, um, um, let's say, through the functionalities of the um, of the game. So um, the game has two levels. Um, and it's oriented on the type of knowledge that the student needs to um together uh, firstly the environment proposes uh, an envi uh, proposes a scene where the student needs to identify the uh, components so it's a blank scene and there is a space where the students uh, can find uh, some uh, components here we are showing that the second level which proposes um, assessment of how the uh, components can be interconnected cannot be accessed before the first level is uh, finished. So we have a set on components that have been modeled as uh, assets and we need to um, identify the objects that are being uh, proposed uh, here and the uh, student is getting a score based on that. So when all the objects are being identified um, the second level unlocks. Um, in terms of um, uh, trial and error, uh, in order to encourage the student that uh, the most important is to um, get the knowledge and not to finish the score, uh, the user has multiple, um, multiple trials to get this task done. Once this level is um, complete, completed, uh, he can move to the next level. We have uh, approached as a uh, second level in the scene to, to um, also promote the idea that this is a more complex, a more complex level. So is this metaphor or going or of going to next level? Uh, in this uh, scene, the user needs to uh, assemble a PC from scratch with a given components. He already should be knowing the components uh, and the role of each, and therefore he needs to correctly assemble. If the components are placed correctly, then the user is getting, uh, uh, let's say, is getting a um, uh, bonus to the score. If not, he's having a life that, um, that he... Uh, that he is missing. I mean, in terms of evaluating uh, the life scores, um, 
it's not that strict because, for example, if the user is placing the object into the correct place, the life is being, uh, he's getting back some life. So uh, we have not tried to orient on, again, uh, errors. So each of the error can be encouraged and uh, the student is encouraged to try more and more until he is, uh, um, he's getting, uh, he's getting a final positioning of the object. Also, some messages while a, a number of components are being placed are appearing on the screen. So um, this was the, the short demonstration of the prototype. And um, for this prototype, we have applied a user um, a user evaluation questionnaire. We yes. Need to, uh, if you can summarize in a few more minutes, and we need to continue. And it's still just, uh, long. Yeah, I'm going to finish in like uh, approximately three minutes. So we have adopted the user experience questionnaire that has uh, the factors which are being proposed attractiveness, so overall impression of the prototype the perspicuity the perspicuity so how easy the interactive uh, environment can be accessed the efficiency if the um, uh, users can carry on the task without additional functionalities that they are um, that they are they they need to uh, be able to finish um, the task dependability if uh, the action is being controlled by the user the stimulation and this is being specifically applied to uh, interactive environments and the novelty on how how novel the environment uh, is compared to other types of uh, learning environments. Um, the UEQ, so the questionnaire is being accessible, so is one of the methods that is applied to such environments, and these are the 26 um, components that, um, that are being uh, assessed. Um, the assessment is done through a seven point Likert scale, and this is what we have applied to the students. Um, we have identified and we have evaluated the components, uh, and we have divided uh, the model divides all these components into a pragmatic quality of assessment and hedonic, so pragmatically referring to how. Uh, um, the features are being used in a, in a specific scenario and hedonic in terms of uh, user, um, um, user perception and user um, wish. And the, and the evaluation that we have um, assessed um, was to point out where we need some improvements. So the actual UAQ that has been applied was to evaluate some improvements that we can um, uh, adopt for the current model. For example, um, we have identified some weaknesses and also some recommendations that can be proposed to these, uh, to these weaknesses. Um, this is also, these are the two case studies that um, we have assessed in terms of conclusions. Yes, the system usability scale and the TAM is evaluated an acceptance um, rate from the adoption point of view. Um, it's also having um, quantitative evaluation scores and then therefore we can compare between systems, but it's not offering a student or a person-centered uh, approach. Uh, some further, some extensions of time needs also to be, of course, evaluated because uh, the support is, ha has been developed during the past year. Uh, and in terms of uh, UAQ, uh, yes, uh, we have validated the uh, instrument to an interactive learning environment, to a, a serious game um, environment that can be accessed. And based on that, we have extracted uh, improvements and weaknesses. So uh, I hope I didn't take too much time. Uh, thank you for your attention.